Today, I'm going to talk about the types of manufacturing. It's going to be a very high level overview, so I'm not going to get down into the individual details because there's thousands of different types of processes, and there are going to be some things I'm leaving out and leaving for future videos, maybe like 3D printing or specific types of welding. But I would say for at least 90% of the products you buy, they're going to involve one of these processes or a type of one of these processes. So at the very top, there are two ways you can add value to raw material and then sell that at a higher price than what you paid for the raw material. So you can take materials, do some sort of process to them, and then sell them for a profit. So there's shaping of a product that can be mechanical, thermal, or chemical reducing. That means you're taking material away in a certain shape. There's consolidation, which means you're bringing things together. There's deformation, which means you're changing the shape of something. Or there's mechanical, thermal, or chemical joining. You're bringing multiple materials together. Then, of course, where there's shaping, there's also non-shaping. Non-shaping consists of annealing, which is heating a material up to change its crystalline structure, hardening, which makes something harder, and surface preparation, coating, or modification. Now, the picture you'll see here is someone turning a piece of pottery. That is shaping. They are deforming the material to make it look different. They're adding value to it. You can consider that a very basic manufacturing process. All right, so getting more specific with some shaping examples. Under reducing, we have drilling, which is mechanical. Most people are familiar with that. You might not be as familiar with broaching, which is also mechanical. Broaching involves more complex shapes, like keyholes and things like that, but it's not too far off from drilling. We have sawing, also mechanical. Again, you've probably sawed in your life. There's plasma arc cutting, which is thermal, uses very high intensity heat to cut through a material. You have EDM, not the music, but electric discharge machining, which, although it uses electricity, again is thermal and is using the heat to cut through something. Then there's photo etching which can be used to create images by removing material. So all of those examples were involved in reducing, taking out some material. Then we have consolidation, bringing things together. You might have heard of it in terms of consolidating organizations, but you do it with materials too. First, there's casting. That's when you pour molten metal to form an object. There's molding. I would say the most famous molding is injection molding, typically used with plastics. A lot of toys, and tools that have plastic in them use injection molding. Then there is compacting, and there's all sorts, but one type that most people are familiar with would be pressing, a large press slamming down on something. Then there are a bunch of types of laminating, and filament laminating is the one I'm the most familiar with. Um, I worked at a place that made motors by hand, and that involves winding a bunch of copper wires around a spool. So that would be filament laminating. Moving on to more shaping examples, there's deformation. Forging, that's when you hit something with a very heavy object. Extruding, which is where you push something through. You kind of push it through a die to change its shape. There's drawing, which is a lot like extruding, but drawing is specifically only wires and tubes. There's knurling, and that top picture there shows what a knurl is. You've probably seen it on a lot of metal tools. Um, I just thought it was interesting to kind of point out that that's a knurl, and you knurl to get that knurl. There's bending. Most people are familiar with bending. You can do that with your own hands a lot of times. Then if we're not deforming something, we're joining things together. There's ultrasonic welding, which is very interesting. Um, a lot of plastic packages are ultrasonic welded together. Um, it makes a very kind of high-pitched noise, and sound waves are actually causing the plastic to fuse together. There's electric arc welding. I'm going to do a separate video on that. The main two types you always hear about that are MIG and TIG. So metal inert gas and tungsten inert gas welding. Then there's brazing. Brazing joins two materials together by melting a filler material between the two metals or two materials. Uh, the interesting point with brazing is that the filler material has a lower point than either of the materials being brought together. Then there is soldering. It looks like it'd be pronounced soldering, but it's soldering. You hear about soldering most often with circuit boards and wires. Last of all, we have adhesives. 
So if you've ever glued stars to a piece of paper in grade school, you were using adhesives to join two materials together. Now we move on to the next big category of manufacturing. If you're not shaping something, then you're probably changing its structure or changing its surface. So first we have annealing. Like I mentioned before, that's changing a material's crystalline structure through heat. You can do that to stress relieve an object, so that takes out some of the internal stress. Um, there's also many different types of annealing, again. Uh, annealing aims to increase a material's ductility, so resistance to being pulled, resistance to tensile forces, but it also decreases toughness, so resistance to having its shape changed. So if they're annealing something somewhere, the whole point of that is to make the object stronger when being pulled, but easier to bend otherwise, or change the shape of otherwise. So if we're not annealing something, we're hardening it. So there's chromizing, um, that's a surface treatment, you apply chrome to the surface. There is flame hardening, again that changes the properties of the surface. There's water quenching, so if you've ever put something hot into water and watched the steam shoot out, that changes the properties of the part. That changes the entire part, not just the surface. There's also oil quenching, which has some different properties than water. Quenches it a bit differently because oil, again, is different than water. Then there is sintering, which is compacting with heat and or pressure, but without liquefying. A great example of sintering in real life outside of manufacturing is making a snowball. Think about it when you press a snowball together. Are all the crystals melting to form that snowball together? No, but the pressure you're applying is making one whole object. Moving on to our final non-shaping examples, you have surface preparation. So you can belt sand something, you can wire brush it, you can degrease it using a solvent, um, kind of similar to a soap. All those prepare the surface of an object for something more to happen to it. You know, you might wire brush something so that you can glue it to something else, you know, adhesively join it. Then we have surface coating. It's usually a final step in producing a product. There is air gun spraying. You have electro coating. And chrome is a very popular way to electro coat something. So you see in that picture there, there's chrome wheels. A lot of chrome parts are made using electro coating. Then you have anodizing. Similar to electric coating, but it's typically done with aluminum. Um, you see in that bottom picture, there's carabiners there. Those were anodized. Then you have surface modification, which is different from preparation and coating. One example is hammer painting. Um, the whole point of this, it helps avoid micro cracks by putting the surface under slight stress. So you're changing kind of the microstructure of the surface. You're not just coating it in something or preparing it for another process. Uh, buffing and polishing as well um, reduce the variance and the, the height of the surface. So at the micro level, your surface is uneven. But if you buff it and polish it, you're changing the surface. You're making it smoother. In summary, there are thousands of types of ways to manufacture a part. But there's only a few main broad categories. So as complicated as something may sound, it probably falls into one of these categories. Everything can be taken back to shaping or non-shaping. And just remember as well, all these processes, they all aim to add value to a product. And they can all be very similar, yet have slightly different tolerances and applications. I would recommend if you ever end up in an industrial setting, try not to be too intimidated by the process. Even if you don't understand every specific detail, you can understand generally what it's trying to do to the part and why. So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you have a better understanding now of different types of manufacturing and what exactly they do and mean. If you like this video, please subscribe. I'm trying to do four or five a week in the summer of 2016. Have a good day.